My name is Christina Fassler. I'm the president of Retina International. What is your concrete role in the ENI network? I'm a so-called EPAC, that means a patient advocate within the network. Our role is to make sure that the questions and the things are patient-centered, that when we see that something is too far away for the patient or unrealistic, that we can interview and intervene and give advice. In your opinion, what is the most important issue ENI could overcome? That the most important objectives of the ERN is to have health providers or health centers that are knowledgeable, that are able to diagnose and wherever to treat rare eye diseases, to reduce the patient journey. That means that it doesn't need many years to get to the diagnosis, to get it quickly, and to get it to the best of the state of art, to make sure that there is also genetic diagnosis included and genetic counselling. What are the main challenges of the network? The main challenge is that first the network grows together and can reach out to the patients. Uh, the HPCs they need to be included in the ERN and that it is clear that the ERN is part of their day-to-day -day work. And so that comes to the final real challenge of the ERN is that at the moment it depends very much on the vo volunteering ideas of the HBCs to participate and to help to let it happen. And uh, for this, we have to make sure that these ERNs will be sustainable and will last longer than the initial five years. They have been granted uh, minimal support. And we do hope that uh, we get more grants issued which are dedicated to the rare eye diseases and especially to the ERNs. Okay, and what are the best advances? I think one of the best advances very quickly is that the community of uh, ophthalmologists and scientists and geneticists in the rare eye disease area in Europe worked together and started to work on projects also outside of the ERN and it now built up a community. And on the other hand, I think that the CPMS, the virtual clinic where you can put up critical cases and then a panel of specialists throughout Europe will discuss it. I think that's for the patient a very important step forward. Okay, and to conclude, in your dreams, what would ENI look like in 10 years? In 10 years, the ERNI should be covering the whole Europe, also those countries where at the moment there is no member of the ERNI and that the ERNI has the means to continue to work. And of course, I hope that for many more diseases in 10 years, there will be treatments available and accessible to all European citizens. Thank you very much, Christina. You're welcome.